Hello and good morning. Today our topic will be the autonomic nervous system and uh, it is comprised of the following divisions. Uh, first of all, the nervous system is comprised of central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system, there are the brain and spinal cord and in the peripheral nervous system, there are sensory pathways and motor pathways. Um, what the motor pathways are divided into somatic meaning body and autonomic meaning involuntary nervous system and uh, the, there is autonomic is further divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic division so autonomic nervous system it controls cardiac muscle, arterial blood pressure, smooth muscles, gastrointestinal motility and secretion during new pressure and sweating General organization of ANS, it has spinal cord, brainstem, hypothalamus, and portions of cerebral cortex and limbic cortex. ANS is uh, the autonomic nervous system operates by the means of subconscious, which visceral reflexes, meaning it is not conscious, but subconscious, the brain is controlling, but it is not, uh, the person doesn't know and it sends sensory signals from the visceral organs and uh, then they go into the autonomic ganglia the brainstem or hypothalamus then the efferent e for exit exit the efferent autonomic signals sympathetic and the parasympathetic uh, they go to the various affector organs which then affect the uh, the they, they just uh, uh, translate the message which is coming from the brain. Then there is the autonomic pathway. Uh, it consists of two neurons, uh, the synapse in an autonomic ganglion. Uh, first of all, then the, there is the central nervous system. The, the, then there is the preganglionic neuron. And then there is the autonomic ganglion. Before autonomic ganglion, the neuron is called preganglionic neuron because it is before the autonomic ganglion. After it passes the autonomic ganglion, it is called postganglionic neuron because it is after the autonomic ganglion and this is the target tissue. Subdivisions of anus. There are sympathetic nervous system, which are thoracolumbar outflow from T1 to L2 segments of the spinal cord. And then there are the parasympathetic nervous system, the craniosacral outflow, which is the third, seventh, ninth, and tenth cranial nerves, and the second and third sacral nerves. Then there is the general organization of the sympathetic nervous system. There are two paravertebral chains, meaning uh, along the vertebra, this is the vertebral V, and these are the chains. And then there are the very vertebral ganglia. And they are namely celiac, superior mesenteric, articorenal, inferior mesenteric, and hypogastric. Basically, these uh, are existing in GIT. And then there are the nerves extending from the ganglia to the various organs. And here you can see the whole map. This is the brain, this is the spinal cord, and these are the sections. This is the vehicle one, thoracic one, thoracic 12, L1, and L2. This is the sacral one. So uh, they, are, they are making the ganglion. As you can see, this is the CD ganglion, this is the superior mesenteric ganglion, and this is the articorenal ganglion. This is the inferior mesenteric ganglion. These are inferior mesenteric ganglion uh, is uh, providing the uh, nervous uh, support with the colon, inner sphincter, ureter, and the bladder. Then you can see the physiological anatomy of the sympathetic nervous system. Each sympathetic pathway from the cord to the stimulated tissue is composed of two neurons, as I've explained before, a ganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Here you can see uh, this is the spinal cord, this is the dorsal root, meaning in the, it is present in the back, and so the ventral root, meaning it is present in the forward. They combine, and then they, as you can see, this is the spinal nerve, 
and then it is giving the sympathetic chain and this is the wired ramus and then it goes to the spinal nerve and this is the splanchic nerve and this is the peripheral region and this is the effectors and sensory basically nerves take the take the sensory uh, messages and also give the effector messages and this is the organ which is taking uh, the effector response from the nerve and these can be different organs and the red one are the big ganglionic the black ones are the post ganglionic and the green ones are the sensory neurons then there comes the adrenal medulla the functions are uh, functions as a specialized ganglion and uh, it is present basically the on the on uh, above the kidney it is basically present above the kidney and uh, preganglionic sympathetic fibers from the intermediate lateral horn cells of the spinal cord terminate on the modified neurons you can see it is uh, the uh, spinal cord section T8 and L1 are giving uh, the uh, uh, narration and then there is the ventral root this is the sense and it is providing the sensory uh, part of the innovation and then it goes to the adrenal medulla and this is the adrenal gland and when it uh, uh, takes the response to the adrenal medulla cells uh, the epinephrine and norepinephrine are released and they then they go into the bloodstream into the capillaries okay and they are through uh, taken through the post ganglionic neurons and then the epinephrine and norepinephrine is released and it is entered into the blood so the epinephrine and norepinephrine is removed slowly from blood so the effects last five to ten times longer than the effect of direct sympathetic simulation because it is removed slowly not very fast and uh, this is the physiological anatomy of the parasympathetic system and we did before the sympathetic system okay uh, there is the cranial secular outflow and the parasympathetic fibers reprint through the cranial nerve 3 7 9 and 10 and uh, spinal, from the spinal cord to the second and third second spinal nerves and the pre ganglionic fibers pass and interpret all the way to the organs and the post ganglionic neurons are located on the walls of the organs you can see from the brain and the, uh, it is going to the terminal ganglion and then the receptor then the acetylcholine is being released and it is affecting the cardiac muscles and other muscles as well as you can see from the spine it is going to the sympathetic ganglion chain and then it is going to the alpha receptor as you can see and uh, from to the adrenal medulla it is also going from the spinal cord this is the whole chart map which part is supplying which organ and this is the cranial and the cranial outflow the 10th cranial nerve the vagus nerve carries 75 percent of all the parasympathetic nerve fibers it supplies the heart lungs esophagus stomach and other organs the third cranial nerve spies the cerebral muscles and the papillary sphincters of the eye and then the seventh cranial nerve supplies the lacrimal nasal and submandibular glands the ninth cranial nerve supplies the parotid gland the sacral outflow coming from the sacrum the sacral parasympathetic fibers are carried by the pelvic nerves to supply the descending colon rect basically the sacrum is the lowest part before the coccyx and it is supplying the colon rectum the urinary bladder and the lower portions of the ureters and these fibers also innervate external gang genteria neurotransmitters of the anus 
all preganglionic nerve fibers are cholinergic, meaning they, receive, uh, they um, give dopamine, and almost all postganglionic parasympathetic fibers are cholinergic. Most of the postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers are adrenergic. Postganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers to the sweat glands and the paralytic muscles of the hairs. A very few blood vessels are cholinergic. These are the sympathetic and parasympathetic pathways. The, the sympathetic pathways use norepinephrine and the parasympathetic pathways use acetylcholine. This is the level of the CNS. Then they go to the autonomic ganglion. Both release ACH, acetylcholine, and uh, then there is the receptors, then it goes to the target tissue. It has an androgenic receptor in the sympathetic pathways, and the parasympathetic pathways act on the muscarinic receptors. And then when there is a, they reach the target tissue, there is a difference between the uh, agent being used in Sympathetic pathways, there is norepinephrine, and in the parasympathetic pathways, there is acetylcholine. Types of acetylcholine receptors, there is nicotinic receptors, which are located on the autonomic ganglia of both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, as well as the negromuscular junction in the skeletal muscles. The muscarinic receptors are present on the factor organs. The androgenic receptors, there are two types, alpha and beta. Alpha is divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2. Beta is divided into beta 1, 2, and 3. Norepinephrine mainly excites alpha receptors to a lesser extent beta receptors. And epinephrine excites both receptors equally. So the effect of epinephrine and norepinephrine on an organ depends upon the type of receptors. The alpha receptor functions in vasoconstriction and beta receptor functions in vasodilation. And alpha is iris dilation, and you can read the functions. Uh, this is the organ, and this is the effect of sympathetic simulation on the respective organ. If you do sympathetic simulation on the eye, Meaning, if you are in a flight of fight response, then there is the dilated pupils because you can have a wide sight in case you need to fight. And the ciliary muscles are relaxed so you can get far vision. And in parasympathetic, when you are becoming normal, uh, the, uh, eye pup uh, the pupils are again constricted and ciliary muscles are constricted as well. And these are the different functions uh, related to the other organs. Okay. Alarm or stress response of the sympathetic nervous system, and they give physical, mental stress, emotional states such as rage, rage cause generalized sympathetic stimulation, cause mass sympathetic discharge. It occurs when the hypothalamus is activated by fright or severe pain. Even you're afraid of something or in extreme pain, then there is a stress response of the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, the ability to perform vigorous muscle activities increase in the stress response. The arterial blood pressure increases, the blood flow increases, the rate of cellular metabolism increases. Blood glucose concentration increases, the blood losses in the liver and muscle increases, strength activity and blood loss co coagulation too. This is the parasympathetic simulation area. And uh, in Matula, there is a vasomotor center and a spirity center, and pons. It is a pneumotextic center and maybe it is a micturition center. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. Hope you like it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.